It's obvious that cam selection has a huge impact on the performance of any forced induction engine, but what factors really matter? Cam manufacturers put a lot of effort into promoting custom turbo grind and supercharger camshafts, but how do you separate the marketing from the science? We called our friends over at Comp Cams and they actually gave us an education on lift, lobe separation, duration, and timing, and how those factors change between a turbocharged, supercharged, nitrous, and even naturally aspirated camshaft. But the first thing you have to realize is the relationship between intake manifold pressure and exhaust manifold pressure in a forced induction versus a naturally aspirated engine combination. It's a pretty big oversimplification to compare an engine to, say, an air pump but it can help us visualize how air is moving through an engine and once you understand how that air is being moved through the intake and the exhaust, you can make the appropriate cam grind changes to completely optimize your forced induction engine. In a naturally aspirated engine, pressure is essentially the same in the intake and exhaust which is close to ambient. Optimizing the cam for a naturally aspirated motor comes down to ensuring that it takes full advantage of your application's intake and exhaust runner length, as well as a lot of other important variables. If the runner length is optimized to suit the camshaft, it allows a cam with more overlap to use the positive pressure on the intake side, combined with the low pressure on the exhaust side to fill the cylinder faster and more fully, leading to increased volumetric efficiency, especially in higher RPMs. More volumetric efficiency equals more power. Optimally, a cam is chosen that takes into account your build, power band requirements, and available traction. With an engine-driven supercharger, the exhaust pressure remains the same more or less, but we have positive pressure on the intake side. Because you don't have to wait for the piston to move to get the intake side flowing, you can open the valve earlier with a narrower lobe separation angle, but that has to be weighed against blow-through during overlap. Though velocity will often be lower because it's compressed, you can move more mass per unit of time past the intake valves, so duration doesn't need to be lengthened. On the exhaust side, more duration is desirable to help reduce exhaust pumping loss, especially with centrifugal blowers that work best at high RPM. For turbo applications, the conventional wisdom used to be that you needed a wide lobe separation angle because too much overlap would kill scavenging. Today's turbos have much lower back pressure, so the engine has a pressure ratio that's much more like a naturally aspirated setup, just with higher pressure on both sides of the cylinder. It's best to treat an efficient turbo engine like you would a naturally aspirated motor, with perhaps a little earlier exhaust opening, especially if operating at high RPM, to help reduce cylinder pressure by the time the intake opens. Nitrous applications operate almost identically to normally aspirated applications, but now with added oxygen density from the nitrous, along with the cooler intake charge, which requires more fuel to be introduced, and thus requires a slight increase in exhaust scavenging requirements due to the increased mass flow. For applications using less than a 20% increase over naturally aspirated horsepower, the best idea is to optimize the cam as if the engine were in fact naturally aspirated. For larger doses of nitrous, the cam will need to be catered to the revised torque curve of the motor in order to lower cylinder pressure and reduce stress on components at lower RPM while allowing for traction. Since nitrous vastly increases torque, especially at lower RPM, skewing the torque curve lower in the power band, the camshaft must be designed to balance out the shift. This is accomplished by adding additional exhaust duration, spreading the lobe separation angle, and adding intake duration, which lowers cylinder pressures due to the exhaust valve opening earlier and the intake closing later. This also shifts more of the power to the high RPM, where the power is more usable due to increased traction. We've only had a few minutes here to scratch the surface, but hopefully we've gotten you thinking about how air moves through your supercharged, turbocharged, or nitrous fed engine, and how camshaft design can encourage it. When it's time to pick the right cam, do like we did and consult the experts. You'll be armed with the information they need, and you'll be ready to ask the right questions.